using the same phrases and you start becoming those words God said to Adam you have an option what you eat and I'm here to tell you one of the biggest choices you have to make in life is what you feed on feed on fear you will be timid if you feed on insults you have low self-esteem what we have to feed on has been told us by Jesus Jesus says in Luke chapter 4 verse 4 man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God Luke chapter 4 verse 4 if you want to feed on something feed on what God says if you want to feed feed on the tree of life not the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that is going to get you into trouble you have an option what you feed on check your life your life is a mirror of your diet check your language it's a mirror of your diet what you feed on also has to do with the kinds of images you feed on because you will worship and conform to the images you idolize what are the images in front of you think of TV think of advertisement think of movies think of who are your celebrities who are your heroes the second commandment God gave to Israel was that you have no image make no images and don't bow to images the pictures you keep in front of your eyes will shape the image of yourself the heroes and celebrities you keep before your eyes will mold your image of yourself your predominant thoughts will rule your actions what you spend your quiet moments thinking about will determine your mindset so what images do you feed on you cannot feed on pornography and wonder why you are fornicating there are some things you must never listen to it's okay to keep up with news but I think that one of the challenges we have in our country is that our, our radio stations are becoming uh, a terrain of verbal war and if you don't want to agitate your spirit you have to monitor what you listen to I think we need more stations that play music classical music play jazz uh, and people just tune in and listen to nice jazz music you know by the time you get to to the office your mind is creative your mind is waiting to solve a problem now this one says and you feed on it and feed on it and whilst you're driving you're agitated and contributing <laughs> you are contributing you're supporting something hey tell them hey tell them hey that is how hey. so you get to the office they give you a problem and you are angry <laughs> you see a client you are annoyed hey what do you want what do you want hey 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 you have to monitor what you feed on don't live your life on autopilot where everything just comes into your mind and you feed on all kinds of junk words the second big choice you have to make is how you choose to call the things that come your way it's very important choice and that choice is in Genesis chapter 2 verse 19 and it reads out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he will call them and whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. God did not call the things. God just brought them. Adam had to name them. It's a choice. How do you name things? 
The label you allow to be placed on you will stick on you. You cannot rise above the way you see yourself. You cannot live life beyond the label you have accepted. If you wear the label of weak, you will be weak. If you wear the label of poor, you will be poor. You know, when you're talking, I say, we the poor people. We the poor masses. We the innocent masses. You are not innocent. You have a brain. And you are not a mass. You are an individual. If you want to live the life of the masses, God bless you. Go ahead and live the life of the masses. But as for me, I choose to live the life of Mesotabel, not the life of the masses. The children of Israel were told to go to the promised land. And God told them the promised land was given to them. Before they got there, Moses sent 12 spies to go and spy out the land. They came back. Ten of the spies says, the land we went in was great, but the people were giants. They labeled what was presented to them. Giant. When you call your problem a giant problem, you will feel like a dwarf. And so they said, and we were like grasshoppers in our own eyes. And so were we before them. If you label yourself a grasshopper, every problem will look like a giant. Because we heard about you coming out from the Red Sea and what God had done for you. And we were afraid. Now, the people you call giants were afraid of you. But because you label them giants, you feel like a grasshopper. What do you call the things that come your way? Things will come your way. Oh, there will be problems. There will be challenges. There will be difficulties. You'll be born into situations. You know, our family, there's difficulty. Nobody rises in our family. And and, and all kinds of negative labels you've put on yourself. God didn't create you that way. You, you chose it. And if you want to label yourself that way, go ahead. It's a free world. But remember, that label is going to stick on you. You know, many, many of us, the battles we are fighting is not with the real issues of life. It is the label we have put on ourselves. You have a choice. You have a choice. There may be times you don't have money. There may be times when you don't feel well in your body. But the Bible said, let the weak say, I am strong. It didn't say, let the weak say, I'm weak. Oh, no. Let the poor say, I am rich. Why? Because the label you put on yourself was stick on you. I hear that fuel uh, utility prices may go up by some huge percentage. Some people will hear that and say, we are dead. <laughs> and I'm not excusing the policy makers. That's, not, that's, that's their issue. But what I'm saying is the way I label it. The way, yes, will it create distortions in my finances? Yes. Will it dis- create distortions for business people? Yes. But you have to label it right. It is a challenge. It is a mountain. And this mountain shall be moved. You have to label your life situations right. God said to Adam, whatever you call it, That's how it is. I created it. I brought it to you. You determine how you want to call it. If you want to call yourself an orphan, that's your problem. If you want to call yourself incapable, that's your problem. If you want to call yourself weak, that's your that's your choice. But remember, the label will stick. It will stick. The script you accept as your role will determine how you act in life. It's very important. A character in William Shakespeare's play, As You Like It, 
was the one who utters, uttered these words, all the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts. That's what William Shakespeare said. And there is some truth in that. If it is so, that all the life we're living is a stage and we're playing parts, then you have to choose which part you play. Because the part you play will determine how you behave. The other time I, I saw a movie of a, a, this gentleman called Jim Caviezel was uh, acting like a crook. And it bothered me. It bothered me. I couldn't handle it. You say, who is Jim Caviezel? Well, he's the guy who played Christ in the Passion of the Christ. So I look at him and say, this guy is the son of God. Why is he a crook here? It's a script that says, today you are the son of God. You behave like a son of God. The next time somebody else gave him a script and says, you're a crook. He's a crook. In life, you play the role based on the script you decide to act out of. Whose script are you acting? Is it your father's script? Is it your teacher's script? Is it your mother's script? Is it your tribal script? You come from a tribe and the script is everybody has to be a watchman. So you, you were born and you were handed over the script. Oh yeah. And that script is handed over to you and, 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 and you become a watchman. You come from a tribe and everybody's a fisherman. Or you come from an area, everybody's a fisherman. The moment you are born, they have the scripts piled up. They say, oh, you have come. We welcome you, Yamawa Atnasi. This is your script. <laughs> so, if you, if you don't choose, you accept that as if that is the only option available. And you go through life, you are a watchman, you are a fisherman, you are defeated because somebody gave you a script. But I'm here to announce to you, you have a choice. You have a choice, a label you want to receive. You can receive that script and say, thank you family, thank you tribe, but no thanks. And you can go to God, the chief producer, and say, God, give me my original script. And in that original script, you are the head and not the tail. You are above only. You are blessed. You are not cursed. You have to choose the right script. Just look at, at your life. Whose script have you been acting? Your father didn't hand you a good script. He decided not to take you to school. That's a script. But you have to get a new script. And educate yourself. Whatever label you accept for yourself will stick. And it's a choice. You have a choice what you feed on. You have a choice how you label things. If every problem you face, you, you say, I'm dead. I'm finished. I will survive. This thing will kill me. Oh. This thing will kill me. Oh. This thing will kill me. Oh. And sometimes you talk to people and they say, I'm being honest. I say, where is the honesty? Who told you that this problem is supposed to kill you? It has come. But in the Bible, when things come, there is another phrase in the Bible that says, and it came to pass. It came to pass. It didn't come to stay. So if you decide you're going to let it kill you, that's your choice. Two big choices. First, what you feed on. Secondly, how you label and name things. And the third important choice, the big one, is whom you choose to welcome into your life. It's a choice. 
Many people will be presented to you in life. You have a choice as to the depth or level of your relationship you want to have with them. Genesis chapter 2, verse 21 to 23. And we read, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman. And he brought her to the man. That's God's job. Brought her to the man. Verse 23. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. You choose whom you welcome into your life. It's an important choice. You choose whom you want to welcome into your life. A spouse, friends, colleagues, acquaintances. There are some people you come package with. Your parents and your siblings and some relatives. But even them, you can choose what level of relationship you want to have with them subsequently. Because if you are like Joseph and all your brothers want you. You have to choose how to relate to your brothers. You have to understand that people enter your life with all that they are, good and bad. People are a package. They come into your life with their strengths and their weaknesses. And since no one is perfect, you can be sure that no perfect person will come into your life. However, some people will come into your life with so much negativity that they can re- disrupt the rhythm of your life you always have to remember that friendship is not by force you are going to be presented with people and you are going to decide whether you say this is bone of my bones flesh of my flesh or you say thank you lord for presenting him but i don't want him in my life If everybody around you is a thief, you will feel permitted to steal. Because human beings are always looking for permission. And the group you are in are your permitters. So you have to choose whom you bring into your life and whom you keep at the door. It's a big choice. You have to do a friendship audit. A relationship audit. And choose. There are some people in your life you know that they are too temperamental. So if you go and tell the person, Hey, this woman, she's a witch. You know your friend will say, I saw it in a vision. (laughs) So that's what you're going to get. Oh, I saw it. Yeah, she's a witch. At that time, you have solidified your decision. You've decided. However, if you talk to another person who said, do you really think so? Why do you think so? And start to really reason with you. You may moderate your opinion. The third big choice is you choose the people you welcome into your life. These are the big choices we have to make. I'm not talking about what shoes to wear, but I'm talking about what you feed on. How you call the things that come your way, the label you put on things, and the kind of people you welcome into your life. These are the three big choices we have to make. And in conclusion, let me say this. We live the life we choose. You say, but I haven't made a choice. That's a choice. Maybe somebody made a choice for you. Maybe your parents made it for you. If you didn't change it, you've chosen it. Whatever has happened to you right now, you have a choice in it. Don't blame people. It's you, it's your choices or lack of choices. Secondly, our choices have consequences, especially in these three big areas. 
what we choose to feed on, how we label things, and the people we welcome into our lives. And thirdly, and this is most serious, is that our choices can have transgenerational consequences. Especially in these three areas. Something we do today can continue to have an effect for a thousand years from now. Good or bad. Ask yourself these important questions. What am I feeding on? Is this the right diet? Is this the kind of words I should be listening to every day? This is how I should build my mind. What am I feeding on? If you don't like it, change it. Change your diet. Go for the right words to feed on. Ask yourself, how do I label the things around me? Everything, I I make everything look like a big problem, impossibility, nothing can happen. Everything is impossible. As for this, it's too hard. As for this, I can't do it. As for this, it's too hard. If that's how you label life, then every little problem will seem like an impossibility to you. Problems you can solve will be left unsolved. How do you label things? And the third thing you have to ask yourself, who are the people in my life? Are they helping me? Should I have to do some shift? Should I move some people out and bring other people in? Who are the people in my life? How do they affect my moods? How do they affect my wisdom? Do they bring the worst in me or the best in me? Do they aggravate me? Or do they help me to sober down? That's a choice. In these three areas you have a choice. And these are the three first important decisions that confronted Adam. And these are the three important decisions that will confront you for the rest of your life. Take time, think through them, ponder them. And make the right choices. God bless you.